Broken moral compass. Look at what's going on in today's society, right? Look what's going on in our state and other states, huh? When they're saying, when they're saying, I won't say it, when they're saying that it's okay for same sex marriage, surely that's a broken moral compass. Huh? Surely that's a broken moral compass. And not only that, the, the compass has been broken even before this issue came up. Huh? Because, listen, listen, there is, an, okay, there is no top ten in sin. All sin is sin. Huh? Huh? Uh, but, but, but we shouldn't wait uh, uh, or, or, or we shouldn't sleep on the fact that evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse. And just because now uh, this uh, 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 this immoral uh, uh, conduct is is uh, is being accepted by states, and then we, as the church as a whole, we are we are starting to lift our voice uh, against it. We should have been lifting our voice against sin a long time ago, huh? But now, now since 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 it's something that we detest, huh? It's the conduct that just. Ugh. You know, but what about lying? Does lying make you feel like that? Huh? 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 What about... Uh, do you uh, when you lie? Huh? Huh? Do you get appalled uh, when you see someone uh, who is, who is, who is trapped uh, uh, in the sin of homosexuality? You get appalled. Huh? You might not even want to sit next to an individual who you, who you, who you can perceive uh, uh, that is a homosexual. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, you might not even speak to him, huh? but you're speaking to liars all the time. Huh? Huh? You're speaking to alcoholics huh? oh, all the time. Huh? 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 You're speaking to haters huh? you're, uh, all the time. Huh? Huh? You're speaking to people who have larceny in their heart. You, uh, you're speaking to people who are covetous all the time. You're speaking to proud people all the time. Huh? The Bible said there's none that's right. Uh, I'm glad I got some Bible because y'all probably run me out of town if I didn't have some Bible. But I ain't going nowhere because I got Bible to back me up. Uh, uh, uh. So, 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 what is it? What is it uh, that makes us uh, at some sin, but be okay with some other sin? Uh, what's wrong with that? Huh? Because I tell you why. Because the moral compass is broken. Uh, the moral compass uh, is broken uh, because because of the fall of Adam. Uh, our moral compass is broken and we can't find our way back to right or righteousness on our own. Oh, we think we can. We think if we get enough education, oh yeah, then I can find my way back. Let me, let me get some letters behind my name. Let me get some alphabet soup behind my name. Uh, yeah. Or we think if we move to another neighborhood or, or you know, if it, or if we, if we uh, 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 dress a certain way. Uh, listen, here's something that you need to understand. Clothes, no matter how much they cost, is just a reminder of sin. So spend all that money on clothes. I go to Ross. <laughs> but spend all that money on clothes if you want to. Clothes is a reminder of sin because clothes didn't come until after the fall. Huh? Adam said we was naked. God said, who told you you was naked? You was naked before. But you ain't know nothing. So every, every stitch of clothes, all the closets you build and get that seat of wood uh, uh, so the moss can't get, all the clothes is a reminder of sin. Huh? Well, thank God we got clothes. Huh? But that's the real, that's Bible. Huh? huh? God made them coverings. Huh? So all the clothes that we have to wear is a, see, God can preach about, he can preach the gospel in clothes. God is something. Hmm? So the next time you put on some clothes, know that God made a covering for you. 
uh, when you get dressed in the morning, you should preach to yourself. I'm putting on clothes, uh, huh? Because the right, uh oh, because the because the righteousness of God, uh, huh? I got to be clothed in His righteousness. Oh, I'm jumping ahead. Let me let me let me take my time. Uh, but clothes should remind you of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But it's because of sin. Uh, oh, okay. Well, since I'm there, uh, God made them a covering. Ah, he made Adam and his wife a covering. So, and, and God showed them, how did he make a covering? He, something died in that garden. Huh? God showed them, the, where are you going to get the skin from? Huh? It, was no, it wasn't no hair, hairless dog. Hair, hairless dogs was not in fashion back in the garden, I don't believe. Uh, so God had to kill something. And he let that man and his wife see, this is the penalty of sin. Something got to die. Huh? And your leaves, what you try to cover yourself with, is not going, again, broken moral compass. We try to cover ourselves with our own coverings. And God said, take them leaves off. Huh? Wait, wait, I can imagine God saying, oh, wait a minute, those are my leaves. <laughs> huh? Huh? Take them off. And here, you need to see something die. Huh? You need, and every time you put on those clothes, you can be reminded that God had to provide a sacrifice. Pointing to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Alright? Alright. So, we have a broken moral compass. We are aware of that. Look at the news. Look at your neighborhood. Look at stuff that's, go look at stuff that's going on in your own house, in your own family. We have a, humans, I'm saying, without God, without the influence of God, without the influence of the Spirit of God, without being controlled and directed by the Spirit of God, our moral compass is broken. How we do? Come on, some of us in church do what we want to do. Huh? Yes, we do. I, I ain't doing that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I ain't doing He must be crazy. I ain't doing that. Huh? Lord, have mercy, huh? We, we call for prayer. I ain't going. You know how much gas I got to waste? Oh, to, to come to prayer meeting? Ah, I got to be here on this day. I got to be here on that day. I got to be here on that day. All right, but then get sick. Oh, man. I, uh, these are not my notes, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. We, we want to do what we want to do. And then still hold on to what we think is right. Uh, but that ain't righteousness. Uh, that's our own standard. Ah, uh, uh, I hear, I hear, I hear somewhere in the scriptures. Oh God, I hear the scriptures say our righteousness. Oh God, is that filthy rags? Oh Lord, uh, and you need to develop and look into what he's really talking about. He's ta okay. I, I, I'm gonna try to do this as as cleanly as I can. When he talks about our righteousness is as filthy rags, it's the rags that are used on the monthly cycle. All right? That's what our righteousness is. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, there's none righteous. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Lord. None righteous. None righteous. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. But I am... I am so glad uh, that uh, the Lord came. Uh, uh, he came to correct all of our broken moral compasses. The Bible declares in Luke chapter number 19, I read it just, just one verse, chapter 19, stay there in Romans because we're coming right back, but chapter 19 and verse number 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Uh, we couldn't find God. Listen, listen, don't you fix your mouth or fix your mind to say, so glad I found Jesus just now. You ain't found Jesus. He was never lost. Uh, we were the ones uh, that were lost. Huh? We couldn't find Jesus if we wanted. The Bible, look, okay, you, maybe you need to turn to it. You might need to just turn to Luke, chapter number 19, and verse number 10. Turn to it. So you see that I'm not making something up. Luke, chapter number 19, and verse number 10. I gotta move quickly. We gotta meet at 1230, right? So, all right. Gotta move quickly. Then we got service at 1. Lord have mercy. All right. So I'm gonna, I'm, I might put it in another gear, so, but stay with me, please. Luke chapter 19, verse number 10. It says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. I'm glad 
because I sure was lost. I was lost and out my mind. Didn't know what was right. I didn't have no real didn't have no real example of right, huh? My daddy, oh, see, I'm talking about me. My daddy was an alcoholic. My daddy hung out in the pool rooms. My mother had mental problems. Mama used to cuss us out, you know, and beat us like we were slaves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, mama, it, that's all that she knew. And I was lost. I was a product of my environment. And so were you, huh? So, and, and, and then God gave me the wisdom to tell my mother, I said, look, you did the best you could. I ain't mad at you. Huh? Huh? Listen, because the Bible says all have sinned, huh? And come short of the glory of God. So a broken, oh God, a broken person will perpetuate broken people. A hurt person will hurt people. That's why uh old -oh, folks get hurt in church. Because we, oh God, we bring our hurts to church and we hurt other people. And until we come to the healer and get healed, we will continue to perpetuate hurt and hurt and hurt. But I'm glad that I was hurt. I'm glad that I was broken. I'm glad that I was lost. I'm glad that I was on my way to hell. But the Bible said that the Son of Man, who is the Son of Man? Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, he came to seek. Lord knows I couldn't find my way out of that horrible pit of sin. I couldn't find my way. I had to look up to see the bottom, and I had no strength to get up on my own. But God, in his grace, God, in his mercy, he got, he came down himself and got me up out of a horrible pit. God delivered me from my lost condition. God looked at me and said, I want you to live. God thought about me over 2,000 years ago and sent Jesus Christ. In fact, he came himself. Wait a minute, I got a knucklehead down there in Brooklyn, sleeping, oh God, on the subway. I got a knucklehead that stoned out of his mind, taking drugs, killing himself, going from relationship to relationship. I got a knucklehead that's smoking crack, smoking weed, drinking cocaine, drinking wild Irish rose. I got a knucklehead that's on his way to snuff out his life and God had somebody send the message of the glorious gospel of our salvation that's how he came looking for me that's how he came looking for you we were not looking for God the Bible said there is none that searches after God so even if you came up in a saved household you were born saved. The Bible said, marvel not that you must be born again. I'm glad. There's one standard of righteousness. Oh, oh Lord. I, I, I remember, oh God, I remember in Colorado Springs, the Israelite Church of God in Christ. They sang a song that you can't join in. You got to be born in. <laughs> I, hey, listen, I will never, I will never talk about that. my Baptist brothers, huh? my Methodist brothers, huh? or my Church of God and Christ brothers. They're on a journey. I was Baptist once. Hallelujah. Mount Pisgah Baptist Church, Brooklyn, New York. I was Baptist once. I was Church of God in Christ once. Israelite Church of God in Christ. Colorado Springs, Colorado. But I praise God that right now I'm blood washed, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. If somebody would have stopped me while I was a Baptist on my journey, Praise God that he gave me the grace to be a Baptist for a little while. I feel like preaching. Praise God he gave me the grace to be a church of God in Christ.
for a little while. I'm not going to make myself just like a Hollis, but somebody out here in Los Angeles, when they saw her, they saw something that I was serious about this thing. They took, I tell you who it was, it was my wife's sister. She took me aside and she explained to me the word of God more perfectly. I said, oh, I need to be saved. I'm tired of being spiritual. I'm tired of being religious. I need to be saved. Listen, there's some spiritual folks sitting in these pews right now. There's some religious folks sitting in these pews right now. Aren't you tired of your so-called spirituality? Aren't you tired of trying to justify yourself? I ain't that bad. Yes, you are. But I got some good news. Uh, if God uh, can save a Baptist, hallelujah, president uh, of the Junior Usher Board uh, and not this the Baptist church. If God uh, can save uh, a church of God in Christ, uh, remember, I'm sure he can save you uh, with your spiritual self, uh, with your religious self. Uh, but uh, my sister-in-law, took me aside and expounded the word of God to me more perfectly. She did not destroy what I had. Hallelujah. That's Bible. I hear the Bible said that at that point, talking about Philip and the Ethiopian, at that point where he was reading, he, he preached to him, Jesus, here's what we need to do to all our religious friends, all our spiritual friends, Meet them where they are at that point. Don't you listen? We need, yeah, we need zeal, but we need it according to knowledge. Don't rip up nobody. Even God said that. Let the weak and the tears grow up together. God is the gardener. Oh, you got to wait a minute. You might water. Ha -ha. You might plant. But God's going to give the increase. He ain't told He ain't told them. We ain't no angels. The angels is going to do the reaping, but we got to do the work. But God, in his grace and in his mercy, allowed me to hear the real gospel. The real gospel. The righteousness of the gospel. And when I heard it, look at the mercy of God. He sent repentance. He had to send it because I wasn't looking for him. He for me, oh God, I thought uh, when I left New York on April the 17th, 1984, I thought uh, I was getting away from all of my problems. Little did I know that God threw a lifeline, hallelujah, he threw a lifeline from heaven and it went to New York. He tied a knot in it in Los Angeles and he drugged me. Yeah, I was struggling, but God drug out me. God said, wait a minute, he in New York. All right, I'm going to throw something out there. I'm going to cause some trouble to come. I'm going to cause all his plans to go down. And then God take the line a little bit. Okay, all right, God, all right, I'm going to reel him in. Uh, God said, oh, I got a good one on the line. Uh, I'm making my boast in the Lord. Uh, it wasn't that good uh, then, but the guy said, oh yeah, all right, he's going to be all right. Uh, so uh, I'm going to drag him through. Oh Lord, he dragged me through three days uh, on the bus. Uh, stopped in a place called Sarah, Oklahoma. Lord, I've never heard of other place, uh, but God was tightening the line. Come on. No, you ain't stopping here. Uh -huh. So I got off the bus uh, downtown uh, at the Greyhound Station uh, April the 17th, uh, 1984. And I thought, yeah, I'm free. I can be a bum. But God was looking uh, for me. Uh, his grace uh, and his mercy uh, was looking for the righteous God uh, was looking for me. Uh, and he brought me uh, to this city, uh, the city that I thought uh, I was going to kick my heels up uh, and be a bum. God brought me to this city and said, this is the place uh, that I called you to be saved. God said, I got somebody in Los Angeles uh, that's going to tell you uh, 
what you need to hear. And I'm working on them and I'm working on you. And while God was speaking to her, he was speaking to me. While God's speaking to me, he's speaking to you. You ain't got to go nowhere. Because when I got off the bus, all of my problems got off the bus with me. I was my problem. But thank God there is a righteous problem solved. None of my problems, none of my addictions, none of my sins could overpower this righteous God. And when I put my faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, see, I understand. I didn't have a leg to stand on. Ain't had no kid. Ain't had no earthly inheritance. Ain't had no apostolic uh, heritage. I ain't know nobody in my family that was saved. But God, look at God. If God can take a, a heathen and make him into a Hebrew, surely, surely, surely he can take a gangster. Uh, surely, oh God, he can take a bum and turn him into a bishop. Yeah. Uh, I ain't prophesying. I don't want the title, but the Bible said I'm already an overseer. I'm just glorifying God. I'm just a magnifying the righteous God. So now I know. Listen, see, this is why I gotta put myself uh, out there on Front Street. Because I think uh, I was like Paul. I told them uh, at my mother's funeral, I said, I'm like Paul. I was the chief of sinners. Because I did some stuff, uh, I ain't telling none of y'all. Because if I told you, there'd be a mad dash for the parking lot. I was the chief of sinners. But God, who is rich and grace and mercy because he is the righteous judge of all the earth. God ignored my sin. He ignored it just like it never happened. God took my place in the person of Jesus Christ on that cross of Calvary. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of our peace, the Bible says, was upon him. He got beat for us. That's the righteous God. The righteous God. 